Yeah, I think we can start <laughs> with that. Ready to roll? Yeah, I'll start. Alrighty, welcome back into the Body Science Content Studio for, is this the first episode of Inside this year? Yeah, first episode. We, we're doing one just before Christmas, but I don't think I'll release it. I think I heard it back, bro. I just sound so fucking stressed out and yeah. tense. I'm like, fucking. Need to get to Byron. Yeah, need to get to Byron and have so, a, a break. So, um, yeah, we've got some hidden content there. Maybe a little doozy I, I didn't club. think it was too bad, but I just like, I just, I listened to it back. I'm like, fuck. Throw it in doozy club. Nah. <laughs> Keep it positive. Yeah. Keep it positive. Um, well, we are back in the Body Science Content Studio for the first Inside YKTR of 2022. And this episode, Isaac, is brought to us by Kelly Partners again. Yeah, Kelly Partners, king of the counting game here in Sydney. Danny, friend, longtime friend, mentor. Um, the difference between Danny and everyone else within he's launched seven-figure e-commerce businesses as, as a side hustle. He gets to see behind the scenes of all the different types of businesses. And you need to know your accounting. You need to know your numbers if you want to grow. Anyone can start a business out of anywhere. Like Anyone can go down, print a t-shirt, you've got a clothing company. But to really scale, to really understand all the sort of stuff, you need to know your P&Ls and they make it easy for you. So shout out Cali Partners Northern Beaches. We're going across there on Thursday too. So All of us? All of us. Cool. It's a marketing meeting for Dice Digital. I don't. But they rent space in that, so... You go go check out the facilities. It's pretty cool. They've got ping pong tables, a beer keg. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's both. Uh, there will be a direct line to Danny, Danny and Kelly Partners in the description below. But let's rip straight into it. Right off the first cab off the rank, as I believe is what you said. Um, the boss is moving out of Bondi. Nah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Potentially. Yeah, so like in my mind, like this always seems to happen to me. Like in my mind, I subconsciously start to say things and happen with YKTR Sports, happens when I launch YKTR. Like I'll say things in my mind where, you're good, Licky? I'll say things in my mind where um, I'll be like, oh, like this place is dark or um, like I don't have a gas cooker. And I know this sounds like petty things, but I'll be like, I just feel like the energy, my energy is often Bondi and Bondi is cool, but it's a bubble and it's comfort, it's comfortable. And like, I'm living a little bit too comfortable there in, in my opinion. So um, I just kind of want to switch up of scenes. If it, is it a new place in Bondi? I don't know. Mm. Or do I move out of there for 12 months and like really crank? So just trying to find that balance because you went here before when like when I used to work here, like I used to be here like six till six and I used to yeah. like crank all day. And then I wore I my- I came over when you were, I stayed when you were in Alexandria. Yeah. Yeah, briefly, yeah. And like I used to wear myself out and then um, I was like, oh, I need a balance. So I moved to Bondi, got balance, but I think I've leaned too far the other way as well. So um, you can't grow if you're comfortable. I think and- comf- uh, there's the saying comfort is an impediment to ambition. So like if you start to fall into routine and everything's easy and cruisy, it can kind of stem a bit of ambition. So there's no one there's no one in Bondi I look at and go, fuck you like you're the guy I want to be. Like, be like, yeah. yeah, there's and I I've lived there long enough now. Like I've lived there almost two years and like I know everyone there now. I've mm. got friends there. And I was like, Oh, I'm gonna miss the water, but then like I swim probably three, four times a week. I can drive there. And like this morning we went for a run and went for a swim and it's a perfect morning. Yeah. Um but then like I always come to work after swims anyway, so I'm doesn't really matter like, yeah yeah so and i'm up early enough where i can dodge traffic so thinking about changing honestly thinking about changing switch the energy up can't be a bad thing mm. and i've always wanted to live in a city like i'm always like my dream was kind of to just go live in new york for six months can't do that now obviously mm. so for the next five years i'm locked in i'm zoned into everything here yktr and growth and and, and i've written down a goal like i financially want to retire by the time i'm 40 as well yeah so um i don't think my actions right now are aligning towards that by living in bondi and then I, I like I'm the party house as well. Like, yeah, best. Yeah. Good, good for the boys. But then, yeah, don't move, I, don't move too far away. <laughs> so, like, whenever we go bears and Bondi's, fuck, let's get back to ISIS. Let's yeah. kick on there. Let's party there. So, um, it's been a, been a fun, fun little ride. Like, I went there with the girlfriend. Ended up single. Uh, me and Mel have been there for a bit. Uh, I just think I, just, I was kind of craving a change. Nothing and and change, like man. and subconsciously, when I was saying all these things, a message come through. And go, oh, you need to move out by May because some of their family is going back. So it's kind of forced my hand a little bit. Yeah. But in my mind, that's the universe telling me that I do need to change. Looking forward to seeing where you end up, man. Um, should we have a little bit of a – what are you doing, Bubba? Get up. A little first month back recap. Um, it's the first of Feb today, so month down. YKTR, YKTR Sports. How's it been? How do you feel like it's been since coming back? Well, yeah, I've only been back a week. But yeah, um, yeah it's been it's good. Different, it's, it's different. different. Energy, yeah, different. It's different. I don't think it's just due to the fact that obviously – it's a little bit chaotic here with the office. Do you want to jump, get him out? He's all right. I can get in the way. Um, but it's just like, it's, it's good. Like I think you can, there's a noticeable shift in Geordie, which means he's being quiet, which we probably think is weird, but that just means he's focused. Scope's obviously focused. Chico's locked in, locked in. Lukey's locked in. Caleb's sort of locked in as well. You're locked in. So it's like it came in, I think at the back end of last year, we were all 
hanging out for that little break. Mm. It felt like mm. obviously mine was sort of forced on me, but um, it's been good being back in here and finally a bit of fucking like we always talk about being planned and being structured, but that's so important. Even if we're just planning a day, two, three, four days in advance, our weeks now seem so much more streamlined. Yeah. Not because, just from a clothing standpoint, but I mean our content in general and sports as well. That's good. That's yeah. good. I'm glad you feel that because that's how, that's what we're sort of me and Lukey t- planned when we first come back as well. So we, we wanted it to be like more accountability, more intense, but like in shorter work periods time. So mm. like, as you notice, we've come back, like we're, everyone's working a lot harder, but there's also like a calm energy around as well. Cause, and that's come up, that's come through planning. So we're nice and planned now. Um, we're having meetings on the regular, like we're leaning in towards meetings. I think we're leaning in towards conflict a lot better than what we used to. And like, sometimes that conflicts on the piss, Yeah, which, which I don't mind. Like we had a few beers on Tuesday and it got a little bit rowdy. And then there was a few real conversations that come out of it. Mm. Um, but it, you feel a lot lighter after, after that. Off, okay. off the back of that so um, I was, remember like I kept on I was like boys 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 and you were like let it nah, happen man. yeah let, let it, it happen. happen and like it's not let it happen and let the boys fight like it was no 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 Byron were, like, but it's like yeah. you, a lot of the times if you get to a point where there's a resolution mm. like, there's no point in arguing and then like no, everyone leaves angry like there's, there's no. no point in that so um, I think we're going to lean in towards those convos. I think there's going to be a lot more conversations with people and I want to spend a lot more time individually with people one-on-one as well because like I think last year and it probably didn't like when I got Luke and Natasha, I could go go that direction and they could go figure it out where like we've got a different crew now where um, and it's still balanced perfectly where but like I, I sometimes I need to go, all right, Kayla, we need to go in this direction, but then I need to maybe spend an hour with them and then we can go. I just don't let them veer off to where they need to go. So yeah. um, I'm still learning that, but yeah, it's going to take a lot more time for all of us, but it's going to be the right thing to do. It's probably like to throw education in it for everyone. I was literally just about to say there's learnings in the, in the whole process when we'll get onto our systems, but if you use a footy analogy, like you'd probably, I'm assuming here, cause shockingly I didn't play footy, but the best coaches you've probably worked with are the guys that understand different personalities and what makes everyone tick. So like you've said it before, but like me and Lukey won't respond to a spray the, the way scope will respond to a spray. A spray yeah. is probably a bad word because that's not what I'm talking about, but there's different ways to handle different personalities. And it feels like already this year, you've sort of navigated that a bit better. Yeah. And it's come with experience as well. So like, if you think about it, so if we, we're, we're perfectly balanced right now. So you've got Chico and um, Chico and scope. Yeah. Like that you can spray them and, and like, I'm trying not to spray them anymore, but like they can go do a job straight off the, it doesn't rattle them. And then you've got probably um, like, Lukey and you who like I can give a task and you guys can go and do it but you don't really respond to sprays as well you just respond to more encouragement then you've mm. got Caleb and Jordan where they probably need more they're more emotional dudes so yeah. if you come in with a spray you got to sort of follow up with like something positive and, and a bit of direction or else they sort of drift off as well mm. so it's understanding like not too many positives everything's either. like <laughs> yeah and yeah that's the other side yeah. of it as well like you can't go too positive with them because they thought they think they start killing Jordy it. kicks his feet up yeah <laughs> kicks his feet up and then Caleb just takes <laughs> days off when he wants, <laughs> when he wants. Yeah. so so it's like and when I, when I looked at it like that I'm like oh and I always say the universe is perfectly balanced and um, if you're not going to balance yourself and we're balanced in, in that right yeah um, and we've got a girl coming to work for us soon and then Natasha will be back and there'll be like two girls in the office so balance. yeah I used to think oh we're, we're too far this way but we're right where we need to be and obviously a part of that energy shifting has been a change in our systems without getting too sort of nuts and bolts about it. Talk to us a little bit about how this year from a systems perspective is different than how we were doing things last year. One of the hardest things to do is read comments, especially on YouTube. Mm. And like, cause YouTube's quite like, it's a low key sewer. Yeah. It's weird. Like, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Carry and, on. and, but I think uh, Gary V always talks about this, like the lessons are in the comments. Like mm. YouTube, like Instagram is mostly positive, yeah. like nine out of 10, 99 out of 10. It's a high reel. Yeah. 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 But you go on YouTube and like, I was like, oh, you guys need to change your minds, you guys. And like, sometimes if I'm in a really good mood when I wake up after a run, whatever, I'll go read through those comments straight away because there are lessons in there. And mm-hmm. like, those guys are just trying to help us out. And sometimes like, it's annoying, <sighs> but um, like, we, one of the guys last year said like, there's too much shit going on with YKATR. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like school to Gary V. I'm like, fuck content, content, content in your face, in your face, in your face. But we're doing sort of a less of more as approach. And yeah. it's not less as like, there's less content, but there's more effort going into the content. There's more planning going into the content. There's more thought going into the content. Like we're spending a fuckload of money on this fit out and like this, this is going to cost a lot of money, but I feel like it's an investment for where we want to go. So um, it's like the less is more approach. And quality over quantity is more fun for not only for like the consumer, but for us as well. Like it's, it's like, more fun to do a, a, 
a well-planned, polished show like this and like sport and like scope, like 10 in the Ken, it's more fun when it's when we know what we're doing and it's not all just like flying by the seat of our pants sort of vibe. And like, I love a binge watch. Like, I'm not really big into TV, but if I get into a show, like I want to watch it more straight away. Yeah. But if you do the Game of Thrones, like we drop on like Monday or like Ghost, we drop mm. on and you create a bit of hype around certain people, um, I think it's a better way to do it. Yeah. And like only nailing our shows before we start to move on. That's sort of been a big conversation. Like Geordie's show's starting to go real, real well. So he's like, oh, I want to start another show. And I'm like, nah. Let's double down here, man. Yeah, let's double down here. If we double the views, it's, it's the same amount of thing as it is. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, and YKTR Sports as a whole, let's, we'll separate YKTR Sports and YKTR. Start with sports. Um, how's it been in the first month and then where do we see it going? Good. Obviously, yeah. with you coming back, I think you're a great host. Um, Scope's main job. So we kind of like, we're crossing over a little bit. So like there was me, Scope, Geordie, they were doing podcasts and all the, there's only so many people not in Sydney that you can sort of podcast and they yeah. were starting to cross over and all this sort of stuff. So me and Scope talked about like a lot of our content will be together. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do the sports show, which is going to be our staple. <laughs> we're going to do a guest show where we've got some pretty guests, cool guests lined yeah, up gonna and going to be, cool. gonna be super in depth conversations and talking about uncomfortable topics mm. so me and scope have kind of partnered up so instead of him going off and doing his own thing we're going to do a lot of our stuff together yeah. so that's kind of going to be the main change of it but same thing it's like here's our core shows this is what we're talking about let's lean right into football because this is like where our expertise lies and and we've got different opinions on stuff like that so that's just going to be the main part there obviously we still got cheese as an athlete so mm. it's how do we build that content around and then slowly start to develop off that do we build, do we get an NRL media pass and go to do a crowd goes wild? Cause that's kind of always been our vibe. Yeah. Um, I think that's where our, like we've always said, dubbing down on sport, our point of difference lies in our access too. Like the fact that you can just call Kalen like now yeah. and have a chat, like that's where we're going to, once we nail our core shows, our sports shows, and we have that sort of lockdown, that's when we, we bring in the boys and obviously like, we won't go too much into what you and Scope got planned, but that's going to be a big part of that player to fan, fan to player sort of ethos that we built the whole fucking company around. And Roasty put up a like Netflix series styles show, yeah, and I was like, fuck, like if I've got money, I'll produce I'll, the shit out of that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll fucking have a crack at build stuff like that because that's that's how I got into American. Like I'm not big into American sports, but I keep an eye on that because those types of shows. Look at what Maddie Attic Ponya did with the Titans, like yeah. shit. Like I know that was high production, but like that was unreal. Fucking we know Maddie. Maddie yeah. was like partnering with us on like New Year's Eve. So. Yeah. Like we can use those guys. So, um, I, I like let's just. I think what we figured out here is like let's just now like call shows, yeah. grow those, and then what's the next cool thing that we can work on? And do we have enough expertise, or do we have enough like people to do it ourselves, or do we need to outsource that? And most of all, do we have the fucking money to do it? That's the difference. The, yeah, that's the next question. The difference between that approach and last year is last year, if we had a dope idea on a Monday, we'd be trying to knock it out of the park by Tuesday. Yeah, so like if we just sort of relax a little bit plan and like you said quality over quantity um and speaking of quality over quantity yktr we're doubling down on not only our product but obviously our systems and our sort of aesthetic in that space talk to us a little bit about the clothing side of it um yeah it has been a change yeah like i always say like if i stayed if i only done yktr on its own i get bored and like like i said like i live in bond right now i live a great life and like mm. i'm bored so i always be trying to do new things but the core part of what we do is clothing and i feel like i haven't dropped a ball but we should be in a lot better spot financially than we are right now mm. and then when i looked at us as a whole like i really want the we want our channels to be separate so mm. you like we'll see yktr on its own and that's purely going to be closed yktr sports that's purely going to be their content individually the boys got all their platforms that they can yeah. promote and they get a percentage of everything that they sell or ad revenue so they uh, it promotes them to sort of promote their own stuff. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I rely on Lukey and Ice and that we, they can do all this shit like that. So, but with YKTR, like you want to, I want us to mature as a brand. I want us, I want you, when someone who doesn't know who we are and they look at our aesthetics and they go, fuck, that's a really cool brand and it's yeah. really thought out. And they've put a lot of emphasis into that photo shoot and, and they've, they're planned out and looked organized. And when they go on their website, it looks clean and stuff like that as well. So, like we're we're still in our organic growth phase. Like we didn't spend fuck all money on Facebook advertising last year because we were selling out. Yeah. And that's on me. So we should be having more stock. So so from from top to bottom, inside out, left to right, YKTR. And it might not it will seem from it from front visually. And when you look at our website, we're not gonna be I mean our Instagram page, we're not gonna be as memey and trying to be all funny yeah. cunts and shit like that. It's just gonna be like a pure aesthetic of like, yo, this is what we do. We sell clothes and we do it at like a high click and um, we really want to focus on that because when someone new comes in and they look at us, 
like, who's this? And mm. then maybe they look behind the scenes and then we can be funny and do a lot of shit behind the scenes. But from the front end, it's going to look a lot more professional. I think last year, maybe speaking to it, like, I know you said drop the ball. I don't think that's fully accurate, but like, like ATR Sports was the new fun, sexy, like it's so much fun creating funny content and you and Geordie sitting down and, you know, Oracle and like having fun like that, that the product maybe not not an afterthought, but it was like the back end of the day. Whereas now like we've clearly what well, you have, Lukey has, like we've fallen back in love with product and process. And off the back of that, when we plan out properly, I think that's when you get I think you can probably see it in the last three drops, four drops maybe. Like uh, not only is the product reflecting the planning, but the planning's reflecting sort of the passion. Is that, mm. is that accurate? Yeah, I'm like product's fun. It's fun like, as fuck. It's fun, yeah. yeah. And like you see, sometimes you get caught up in all the funds, like other shit. But that when you're do. sitting there with your fabrics and you're fucking yeah. talking GSMs and all that gibberish, like that's cool. That's fun. Yeah, of course. And like, like I've learned so much over the past couple of years, like through having a really good mentor in this space as well. Mm. And like as fun as that is, like a lot of it falls back on numbers as well. Like you guys should have this many sitting in yeah. stock all the time or – you had this core product. So like I do a lot of things and I've got to spend a lot more time on that. And obviously we're hiring a girl soon and she loves products. So I've been talking to her like heaps and um, like we talk about different brands and different cool things. And, and like, I haven't really had that person to like, like back in the day I used to hang out with Louis Brown a lot and I was into clothes then cause he was into clothes. He loves product. Yeah. <laughs> and like I, as soon as I'm around people that love stuff and I'm into it, you yeah. know, I'm all in, it's like sports cards, it's like crypto, it's like NFT. Like once I'm in, I'm in. Um, so it'd be cool to have that sort of person around that. Like it's not just me giving out advice all the time. It's yeah. like I can go and ask. Yeah. Dope. Um, speaking of females, she knows. Yeah. Bit of a clunky transition there, but uh, <laughs> give us a little bit of a she knows update because I know that there was a lot of excitement around it sort of back into last year and we sort of left it left it there back into last year. But what's going on with you know? So twenty five percent of our followers are actually girls and a lot of really? girls. Yeah. A lot of girls oh, act, no. a lot of girls actually wear our clothes. Um in terms of buying, probably but, it's about twelve to fifteen percent. The cut and sew stuff looks dope on chicks. Yeah. yeah. And like we've never really marketed on chicks as well. Mm. So we're gonna scale down in terms of sizes and make a lot more smalls and potentially some extra smalls so girls can rock it. But they're kind of into oversize at the moment. But she knows um I've got this friend, her name's Sarah Bagnell. Yeah. Um, she, we've, I've known her for about 10 years. We haven't been in touch for those 10 years, but kind of always know, knew her crew and her group of mates when I was growing up in Auckland. And like Auckland's a really, really, really cool place. Like around Ponsonby, around that area, it's a place where I got into shoes. Um, everyone's got their own sort of style. It's kind of, there's no really place around here like this. Yeah. Like you, you'd say Newtown, but without the hipster. <laughs> yeah, without that real dark vibe. Even like Surrey Hills, it'd be like Surrey Hills, but like it's parts of Melbourne, which is sort parts of parts of Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. Um, like say Surrey Hills, but not as corporate. Yeah, like there's a bit more of a street vibe to it as well. So, um, and they're they're from around that area, and like she's really cool. She's into very similar brands that I'm into, but probably knows a lot more about products. She's got her own brand called Staple and Hugh that she's going really well on. Mm-hmm. Um, but she wants to move down to Sydney and and expand that and then when i knew she was coming to sydney she asked if she could hot desk from this office and i was like yeah cool come through we'll bounce ideas and then as she knows started to grow um there's no point in me making girls clothes because like i want she knows to have a female voice and like a female <laughs> feeling behind it feeling, like, like that has a that has a isaac john like white atr feel to it you yeah. know what i mean because it's not just a t-shirt that you've slapped together like it's you know and i get what you're saying you want it to be authentic and like I, I, I can't fit a female hoodie and go, no, nah, you know what, this feels yuck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this feels exactly. cool. So you can um, throw an hour <laughs> shit and be like, nah, it's a quarter inch long. There, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, because I know this brand inside out, I mm. can do that. But then I want she knows to take on its own sort of role. And we always talked about media as the same sort of model, and I'm, yeah. I'm still open to that because we're going to have the facilities to do it. Um, Fuck, once this place is done, we're going to have the facilities to do whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, but she like um, as soon as I thought of it, she was the first girl I thought of. Um, and then she's moving down here anyway. So cool chick. You guys will probably get to meet her. I'll probably podcast. Oh, I don't think she's into podcasting or anything like that, but I'll try and get her on and do No some. one's into podcasting until you start doing it. Yeah. And then, addicted. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so she'll be around your serum content. Um, good looking girl as well. So mm. all the little YKTR fans have been trying to hit her up. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> Another Jade Spooner effect. Uh, sweet. Okay. Well, should we roll through the boys one by one and yep. then, uh, wrap it up? Let's start with Skipper Scope. Because uh, he's been on one of late. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Mr. Third Gear, Mr. Neutral. Yeah, good. We always sort of say scopes like this, like he sort of just cruises along. Geordie's a uh, roller coaster. Yeah, Geordie's a roller coaster. So Geordie's <laughs> highs are highs and his lows are low. Um, and you, like, you can get that in a week. Yeah. So like, if, if he doesn't work out YKTA, he could always get a job at Dreamwood as an emotional <laughs> roller coaster. 
And, and do you know what? She's a fun ride. But fun, fun ride. Yeah. Um, yeah, Scope's really good. Like, like we always said, like, he's not the same Scope that he come in. And obviously, personal life changes. He's very into his girlfriend at the moment. They've got a great relationship. Loves walking his dog. So he's not hanging around the boys and all that fuckery a lot. So yeah. he doesn't get caught up in it as much. Um, so we had the conversation last year of like, where do you want to take him? And he wants to take a bit more of a serious route. He's still sitting on the fucking gold mine with the punters club. Yeah. And we can definitely do that. Like he can monetize that a lot more, but his merch is going to move into like sort of wrench due and, and he loves getting after it in the morning and having a beer on the weekend. Um, we can build great narratives around him and it's more true to who, who he is as well. That's what he does. Yeah. yeah. And like, he's just consistent. Um, he's got like, does what all the shows, him, yeah. all all the shows are with me now, so he's he's a lot more on the ball. Um, yeah, just he's nice and planned, which is really good, and he's got some really good points. So he's got, I think he's going to be big this year. I, I've I said to him, I was like, if you don't make this amount, like you're not having a crack this year. Yeah, and I looked him straight in the eyes. So, yeah, um, yeah I think he's going to be good, bro. Like you can never really say anything bad about Scope. No, it's too easy. Yeah, and only times that I start to do it is when I start to look at Geordie and Geordie's shining, and I'm like. Yeah. Oh, what, like, what's Scope up to? <laughs> Feet up on <laughs> and, the desk. And then when, yeah. when Geordie dips, it's yeah, like, fuck Scope's like, good to have around. Like, scope, <laughs> scope looks like a superstar. So, yeah, yeah it's always that not, uh, he, it's just nice to have someone that's so constant and so consistent and steady. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. He's, he's your Mr. Reliable and he's a good back rower. Good back rower. It's, you don't get 150 of the best for no yeah, reason. Yeah, eh? that's it. Um, now let's talk about the Samoan Princess, <laughs> my best mate in the whole world, Jordan Simi. Good. He's How's been, the kid been? Good, good, yeah. good, really good. Like, lot like First month has been very good. Yeah, yeah. and like a lot more stable. Like, I remember <laughs> one of my old coaches say, like, everything you do off the field matters on the field. And like winning starts on Monday, he used to say all these cliches, and I was like, shut the fuck. <laughs> just got this one a bit of shade. Yeah, just go, right, give me the ball, bro. The fuck out the way. <laughs> um, and like Simi, Simi's that guy. The thing about Simi, he can't compartmentalize. Yeah. So his world is his world. So if, if work's going good and like he wants everything else to be going good, yeah. like he can't have something off field, and we'll just use a footy analogy, yeah. like go down and come to work and still kill it. No, he he yeah, yeah, he doesn't sort of have that balance yet. Um, but you just want him to just steady the ship up and he's, he's been really good. Like he's got us, he's got us in a few red loss sponsors. So. That's, that's sponsored <laughs> up to the eyeballs. But, um, and like over the break, he's like, Grouse is the number one show. And at the time it was, but right now it isn't. So, yeah. so it's just like having those conversations and he's much like Caleb, like yeah. you can have the tough conversation, but you got to follow up with like something positive and then like a bit of direction and he'll go do it. He's gotten a lot better at a bit of self-reflection too. Like he hit me up after last week, obviously it was my first time back with him and because of my off field stuff, I couldn't just zing straight away. I wanted to, and it was good to see him, but like it, it, you know, the show was what it was. It was still fun to be back, but he sort of came back on the, once he emerged from his uh, missing persons report, he came, he came straight back in and he had this whole fucking plan of here's the next four shows. Here's the guest, here's the structure. And I was like, that's my part of the fucking, <laughs> yeah. I thought that was my part, but he is, you know, he, he understands what he's sitting on. He understands the potential the thing with Geordie's and you just want to, it's one thing to hear it. You just want to see it now. So. Hey, like He's good for the office. Yeah. He's fucking best. Yeah. So like, and now that we've got him parked up there and he's a sort of not out of sight, <laughs> out of mind, but you can sort of block out the noise a little bit. Um, yeah, he, it's good. Hey, eh, Lukey. <laughs> I think with Geordie, like the stuff that doesn't matter any to anyone else matters to him so much. Yeah. And then like, and like, if you can just give him that, he's happy. Yeah. Like he, he's happy there in the spot now because he's higher than everyone else. <laughs> and like we had him his desk where Geordie was and like, it was like that much higher. And he, yeah. like, he gets a kick out of that stuff. He hated facing the wall too. Yeah. Felt like everyone was like, yeah. Um, so you just like, without giving him too much, you just got to give him what he needs. And then, then, and the other side of it, but I don't have like, this sounds harsh or uh, bad, but I don't have massive expectations of Geordie. That helps. Because then, like we said the other day, you're not disappointed. Like last year, when Geordie starts to crank and roll, we go, oh, fuck, okay, you can do this, 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 and this. And we know one thing about Simi is as soon as his expectation, the cunt fucking folds like yeah. wet origami. So, so yeah, pre- like pressure's a good thing, but pressure, yeah. pressure ain't for everyone. And, and he doesn't like, like this, it. This, this is like... No, it's, it's just, just personality trait. Yeah. yeah, it just isn't for him. Like, mm. if I'm, I need you to do this by this day, like he just goes, <laughs> like crumbles. <laughs> um, but then like if you go, hey, like... He, he'll come to me and say stuff and you'll say it weekly. And then like when he, whatever he says to me, I'm like, oh yeah, cool. Like go do it. And then, but my expectation of what he's actually going to do, if he can complete it like 25 to 50%, I'll be like, yeah, that's good. That's a win for me. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, that's how I'm treating Jordy. Let's move on to the young fella, Caleb Coronius. Mm. How's the kid been? Yeah, good. Um, just missing his TikToks. So, um, <laughs> it's like, 
Still trying to find the balance with Caleb as well. Like obviously yeah. he's 18, he's more playing footy. Yeah. Does like a lot of shit outside of what he does here as well. So we're still trying to figure out that balance. And um, same thing, like thing with Caleb, we just constantly have to be in communication with him. And our first conversation that we had this year is like, make sure our communication lines are always open. Like yeah. if you're having a bad day, like let me know, I can help you out. Or um, if you don't know, just ask. Because mm. a lot of the times where they, whenever there's a gray area, he'll just like crew. So yeah. like if I don't go, oh, I need you here by this time tomorrow, he'll just, he'll be in Later. Northern Beaches doing backflips yeah. on, on a Wednesday. <laughs> so, so it's uh, just constant communication with the boys and, and working. But he's probably at the point now where he's nailed life at YKTR to the point where he needs more responsibility. And he's done a photo shoot last week and the content came out really good. Oh, as well. yeah, I was really impressed, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's like, he's like Geordie as well. So you like, you got to add stuff to him, but not like throw Overload it all him. on him. Yeah. So, yeah i can't like me and caleb are just mates so i can't speak to sort of the personal stuff but from like a pure business stuff upskilled like he's 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 made us massive of course yeah but he's upskilled personally massively behind the lens from when he started which was the biggest thing so like if and i think he he probably admitted as well he's more comfortable now coming to lukey than he probably was before and saying hey i don't know how to do Mm. a b c d and Luke, you'll say, here's how you do it. And he'll use his fucking 19 mouses and 17 screens and whiz through it. And then I'll say, can't shift down a gear. And then they work through it. So, but, but he's that, certainly upskilled. We always say this is a weird environment because, like, imagine being 18 coming in, like, oh, like <laughs> fuck, I'm, 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 confi- right. I'm confident as fuck. Like, yeah. S- Scope talks him to- about himself in the third person. <laughs> like, Corey's like, I'm confident, can't Chico's confident. And then Semi's selectively confident. Yeah. <laughs> and Luke and I have never, not that there is like any sort of hierarchy here, but Luke and I have never had someone that, comes to us in a professional sense i certainly have it who would come to me and ask things i'm usually the just kind of on the tools asking above so when Kevin yeah. says oh hey how do i do this i go oh fuck i don't really <laughs> mm. i don't really know that's so we're all we're all sort of learning but i've been impressed massively by just the pure skill level he's developed behind the lens and editing as well i think his next thing is just punctuality uh, yeah surely turn up at eight o'clock like probably <laughs> oh hey, caleb how long have you worked in a long f- june nine, july yeah eight nine, months so nine months, you've yeah. been late about 10 11 times yeah and I'm just like, fuck, that's a normal job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on your ass, boy. Yeah, you're on your ass. Yeah. So. That's, you gotta, that's, most times you got to clock in. We should just clock in. Duck yeah. the cunt's pay if he's late. Yeah. yeah good, good, Sorry, bro. I shouldn't good point, that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for me. I'm across the road. I'm still, I was late today, so that's all right, brother. Um, all right, let's move on to the backbone of YKTR, Jackson <laughs> Thomas. Uh, how's the kid been? <laughs> yeah, good. Like, obviously, how much have you talked about what's going on? Uh, nothing really. So I did it, um, did it on the first episode of Grouse and got a bit of motion, but I'm happy to talk about it now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so like, let's just space. put it this way. You're basically going through the hardest part of your life. And then we talked yep. about Jordan where he can't compartmentalize where you can, yeah. where I don't feel like it affects your work too much. So it's been really good. But one thing I've probably like linked on you too much last year, I think I put too many different hats onto you. Mm. And then you, I think you we're, just like, to, we're trying to find the one that fit. Yeah, 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 that's the other side too. But you then you'll try and take on Scope's role and and Simi's role and it's like you're like, oh I'll do that for them. Like if mm. you give them a way if you especially give a scope and send me a way out, they'll take it every day of the week. Yeah. Every Learn day that the without, hard way, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you take on their role it starts to affect your role as well. So obviously you guys are Luke and you and Luke are full time. So I've got a lot bigger expectation than I do on those other boys. Mm-hmm. Like I literally said like I've got no expect 25% <laughs> of Geordie where like with you guys I need you guys to fucking hit it if you guys are going to make a mistake that's cool there's lessons in that but I can't have too many mistakes and just made a few last year yeah though. there was just a few last year that were going on so I think we've simplified your role a little bit um, yeah you know, I still think you're our best host as well so yeah I, th- I think you're in for a big year as well yeah and, I, and you've always said you love structure and planning and yeah. you've brought that to us um, so yeah you're, you're going to be good yeah no I'm, I mean it's been Hard outside of work, but I am hopeful. Well, I like to think I'm able to just park it at the door and deal with it when I get out. So yeah, this is my this is where I'm comfortable. This is where I have fun. This is where I enjoy work. So and you're doing all the right things. Like you're yeah. in a like good group of friends. Like you're training in the mornings. Yeah, like you we're working towards something. So you, yeah. you got a lot of good things going on. It's just mm. don't have the full circle at the moment, and nah. that's okay. Shit happens. Shit happens. Um, but it is what it is. I am separated. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he's single, single looking good. And- um, let's move on to Lukey Stowe, the Swiss Army knife, yeah. the jack of all trades, the master of none. Uh, how's he going? Yeah, good. Yeah. One, one thing about Lukey, like, he's, he hasn't had a goal since he's been here. A goal? One goal. Well, it's because he just keeps hitting everyone else's. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> nah, so, so Lukey, so he's been here for two and a half years now. Um, he sort of does his job at such a high effective level. Like, you don't want him to get bored as well. So, mm. like, the next part for the conversation that me and Lukey have is, like, how do we, 
like challenge you and yeah. do we challenge you with do we incentivize you through a different way as well so that's probably the next conversation because he's just like operating in such a great way and you're like he can do he can do this job with his eyes closed now and the other thing in is theory like, like yeah. i don't have to be here for do it as like and no. he can run it um which is great for me and that helps me out a lot and obviously i trust him a lot but it's just like like how do we keep challenging is it a leadership role is it mm. do we incentivize them through money is it this next business that we because he's into nfts and shit at the moment so it's just it's just having the conversation i'm showing there's a pathway so yeah. it just doesn't feel like he's just going one two one two one two the same way i um like it's easy and everyone for me. will get to that point yeah. now but he's just there first the same way i'm able like i go oh, i'll do that for ooh, for um simian scope because it's quicker he does that for caleb and i because lukey can do everything like that mm. but it's just part of like we've always said, I need to let go with those boys. He lets go with me and Caleb a little bit, and then it allows him to level up and focus on the high end of the business because that's where he operates and fucking excels. Yeah. So, and we're still trying to like we're still trying to figure that out, eh, Lukey? Like where he's best fitted because he can do so many things so well. Mm. It's like like what what do you enjoy the most, and where do you see the biggest swing for Lukey? Biggest yeah, and like areas? what makes us like the most money? To be honest, like yeah. we're at that point now where it's like, all right, you're worth this to the company. Yeah. So um, that's where we're at with Lukey. Yeah. Um, but he needs to figure out what he wants as well because he doesn't know. Yeah, figure out what you want, man. Yeah. Figure out where you want to live too because I need a flat, mate. <laughs> um, all right. That is Inside YKTR. We are dropping clothes again this Sunday. Sunday? Sunday. Sunday at 6 p.m. We're running four short supply and demand colorways. Green, red, blue, charcoal. Four of the charcoal tees we see. We've got the Star Wars vibe over there. You know the rules. I'm running the kookaburra, which is a personal favorite. Bit of a fashion piece, this. I like very, it. Eh? It's so, less ykatr more sort of fashion fashion. So. Do you know what's funny? Like, I've never seen a kookaburra until I went to the Gold Coast. And oh, you see it everywhere. That car was just fucking... <laughs> no, she used to fly into our house three o'clock every day. Yeah. Three to seven, sit there, take our food and cruise home. Oh, that, I saw that with the, uh, when you were normally with it. Yeah, yeah. he'll just come on the table, take our food and cruise. Yeah, that was weird. Uh, so we are running six o'clock. There's four new of the charcoal oversized tees, plus the shorts. Jump on and cut, cut yourself something. And the cut and sewn. I think there's a few hoodies left as well. So get on before six, snap them up because they will go. Inside YKTR. Later. Done and dusted.